my name is Zach Brown and I am a SOLIDWORKS support tech with Go Engineer. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make the spring you see here and have it update properly given any length of your choosing. Now there are other ways to make springs in SOLIDWORKS like using a helical curve but for this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do it within the sweep command. We'll also use a simple equation to drive the number of revolutions based on the length of the spring. So what I've done is I've created three sketches. I'm gonna hide the sweep here so we can see and show the sketches. First sketch I made was a construction line. I made it on the top plane. I made the construction line midpoint coincident with the origin and I gave the length of the construction line half an inch. The purpose this sketch is going to serve is to be, as you can see, the outside diameter of the spring. Second sketch I made is the profile, which is just a circle with the center point coincident to the construction line and the outside diameter coincident to the end point of the construction line. The third sketch I made was a vertical line on the right plane. I gave it a length of one inch. And as you can see, I made the beginning point of the vertical line coincident with the origin. And then after you have those three sketches, you just click the sweep command. And I'll just go ahead and edit the feature to show you. What you do is, in your profile box, you'll select the circle. In the path box, you will select the vertical line. And then you will have to expand the options. And you can tell it to twist the profile. And what I selected was specify twist value. And under twist control, I chose revolutions. That just makes more sense to me, but you can choose radians and degrees as well. What I did was typed in five revolutions. So I want this profile to sweep around the path five times per inch of length. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go back and show the sweep so we can see what's going on here. And I'm going to hide the sketches Okay, now the next part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an equation to drive the number of revolutions based on the value that you set for the length. So first, what I'm going to do is right click on the annotations folder and choose show feature dimensions. And so you'll notice that it gives you uh, the dimension for the revolutions is actually shown as degrees. So it's 1,800 degrees. We're going to use that in our equation. But first we need to set up a global variable. So to do this we're going to go to Tools menu, choose Equations, and in your Equations, Global Variables and Dimensions dialog box to add a global variable, you'll just click where it says Add Global Variable, and we're going to type in the words Spring Length. Then we're going to click in the value box and we're going to select the dimension for the length, which is the one inch dimension. We're going to hit the green check mark. That creates the global variable. Now we're going to add an equation using that global variable. So to add equation, we're going to click in the add equations box. And what I'm going to do is select this dimension here that is representative of the number of revolutions. Although, like I said before, it shows as degrees. So it's telling you the sketch name or the dimension name. And then the next thing it wants to know is what that is going to be equal to. So we're going to select the global variable spring length 
So we're saying the number of degrees is equal to the spring length. And since it gives you the number here, 1800, we're going to type in its space. And then the multiplication sign or shift plus eight space. And then I'm going to type in 1800. And for the units drop down, I'm going to choose degrees. Now this is exactly equal to five revolutions per inch. So we're going to click OK. Now it says this equation evaluates to a value that lies outside the modeler resolution. That's OK. Just ignore that. Hit OK. And now you see you have an equation set up on your dimension that determines the number of revolutions. So to test this, we're going to double click our dimension for the length. And let's change that to, let's say one and a half. Click the rebuild sign. And you can see that it adjusted the spring. Just do a couple more tests here. Let's type in 0.75 or three quarters of an inch, rebuild that. As you can see, it is updating the value of the degrees, which is a representation of the revolution. Unfortunately, they don't give you revolution count here on your dimension. So this is a way to use it with degrees. I hope this tutorial was informative to you. Again, my name is Zach Brown with Go Engineer. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.